Welcome to Prophetic Apostolic Paradigm. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind. All right, we'll continue with our chat, The Voice and the Glory of God. And our theme is The Voice of God. So we've been chatting The Voice of God. And today, I'm picking on the topic the parable of buffet or buffet depends <laughs> on the country where you come from where you live 
the parable of the buffet or the buffet. All right. From there, I, I sent a post and I said I was asked this week, very good question, very, very good and it's important. So I felt like uh, others may also benefit from that question. So let's chat it and as we are chatting, please, if you have any question, you can post it or any comment or any disagreement, just feel free. I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy questions, I enjoy differences, I enjoy disagreement, it's all good for us. So please, feel free and let's talk, amen? Alright, so, yeah, bless you, bless you. So we're dealing with those two scriptures and all right, so we know if you've ever attended a training, a tra training or lectures or been in a class before, uh, before any new topic is taught, the teacher or the tra trainer or the lecturer who defined the terminologies, who defined the terms, because is very very important the same term in a law may be different in politics the same technology it be even within law when you do the an undergrad the llb there's a term known as president the same technology is also in when you do postgraduate or the to be a solicitor or whatever the postgraduate courses, the same word president is there, but their meaning are different. So you can't just assume, you can't just assume because a terminology is used in a particular course or context. It means the same thing and another. So that is very, very important about when it comes to terminology. So I've given some few definition here and I want us to look at them quickly. Then I'm going to look at the two scriptures. These are the two main scriptures that the doctrine of scriptures, the doctrine of scriptures is taught from. Doctrines are beliefs, and our beliefs are based upon the word of God. Our beliefs are not just based upon scripture. It's based upon the word of God in the scriptures. So, the doctrine of scriptures so let's look at that one. I'm going to, so the main two scriptures are Second Timothy three sixteen, then First Peter one I think twenty to twenty one, and there is also I think another verse in the chapter three of Peter. But the main these are main two, Second Timothy three sixteen, Second Peter one twenty to twenty one. Very very important scriptures that deals with the doctrine of scriptures. There's a doctrine about scriptures in theology. So in other words, there is a whole a system of thought in theology known as the doctrine of scriptures. And I want to touch on a few. All right, so now let's define some terminologies again. The first one is inspiration. You know, inspiration or, ins or inspiratio. You know, inspiratio means breathed, air, wind, blown by wind wind blowing you see so whether wind being blown into it or being blown out of it or being blown onto it but whatever is blown and where do we see that concept the first concept is in genesis chapter 1 verse 2. in genesis 1 2 what happened there bible says that the world the earth was null and void there was a catastrophe genesis 1 2. verse 1 said in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth. So remember the heavens were created. The heavens have a beginning. They were created. Then two in verse two, there was catastrophe. There was chaos. Bible says that in the world, the earth was noid and void. And what happened? And Bible says, and the spirit of God, the rock, the wind, the breath of God began to hover upon the surface of the earth. The wind of God, the breath of God. In other words, there was the inspiration of God. And what happened? When there was the breath 
of God or the inspiration it does not mean that God was breathing the creation but rather within the chaos the Spirit of God moved hovering over it in other words was roaming on it and bringing order out of chaos or out of discrepancy or abnormality the Spirit of God the Ruach of God the breath of God the air the wind the Ruach of God began to hover upon the earth and trying to put make order out of chaos so that's the first time we see the concept or the view or the idea of God breathed God breathed upon the earth so it was his breath or the wind of God guiding the earth and putting the earth the chaos earth into order that's the first one so inspiration has to do with God by his spirit is the spirit of God guiding and bringing order when we're talking about inspiration so we talk about inspiration of scriptures we are talking about the Holy Spirit guiding the writers remember it's a script the writers of the scriptures he guided them he guided them that they would document they will write they will script they will record exactly what God wants us to know Bible said that what is hidden is for God but what has been revealed is for our consumption so God wanted to reveal a scripture and within the scripture is the word of God and he makes sure that the account the incident the contest the history whatever happened was recorded so later we're going to look at one uh, two examples we'll look at dr luke and apostle paul about some documents that they documented or they scripted or they wrote and how the holy spirit guided them we'll look at that uh, all right bless you linda bless you bless all of you all right like i've said you have any question if you have any uh, comment any disagreement please just post it and i'll pick on it and we can discuss it's a chat you know we are chatting in it i like discussions <laughs> all right so that is inspiration for us so inspiration or talking about the the all uh, the uh, the scriptures were inspired or uh, inspired we are talking about the breath of god moving upon the writers of the scriptures those who documented he moved upon them he guided them so that they documented what god wanted to be documented and in the documentation was the word of god in the documentation were the words of satan words of demons words of kings words of countries words of communities words of nebuchadnezzar words of satan there were so you know as all these things were documented word of god words of people words of satan words of demon words of joe means my words the word of god means a word of god so let's now look at another terminology scriptures so scripture simply means writings or documents or recordings script like movie script so we should remember that and bible simply means books i've told you so example the book of acts remember so bible means books so one of them is book or bible of acts book of acts that's why all the books of the bible are known books of the book of acts the book of genesis the book of exodus you see that term comes into them the book of the book of because bible simply means books the the bible means the books so in the books plural individual books we have the book of acts the book of exodus the book of genesis we have all these books all right another terminology i wanted to define was the word of god the word of god is the only truth for beliefs or for doctrine listen not all the scriptures is for beliefs or doctrine no words for for us to have beliefs and live on for us to be have beliefs and acts for us to have belief for power to be released we need doctrines beliefs and those beliefs and doctrines are based upon the word of god in the scriptures remember 
In the scriptures are many words from different people and personalities. Even an animal spoke. So that is another point. The other point, so the word of God is God's word. What is the word of God? The word of God are not uh, uh, situations that happen. The word of God are not incidents. The word of God are not people talking. The word of God are not what people giving their opinion. It's not the word of God. The word of God is God speaking. The word of God is God acting. The word of God is God revealing. That is the word of God. So let's, next point is the parable. So a parable is telling a story by taking every normal thing, every daily thing, activities around us to reveal a spiritual truth. That is a parable. A parable is taking everyday activities around us. Example, Jesus gave the parable of the sower. Because in those days in the Middle East, the main occupation or work or uh, job was farming. So everybody was used to farming. So he picked on their surroundings about farming of occupation or career about a job as farming or a farmer. A farmer went out to sow. And he used that surrounding to give a spiritual truth. So in interpreting that scripture, you're not going to pick every bit of it and say, this means, this means, no, no. What is the spiritual truth that Jesus wanted to communicate to the disciples? Remember, a parable is not for unbelievers. A parable will make unbelievers not to hear the voice of God. In other words, a parable will make hardened the years and the heart of an unbeliever. A parable will make it more difficult for an unbeliever to understand the word of God. But a parable makes it easier for the believer or the Christian to understand the word of God. That's what Jesus said. Alright, so that is what a parable is. And we know a buffet or a buffet. You know, like especially there's a lot of this Chinese restaurants and other restaurants that, you know, you go and pay whether 20 pounds or 30 pounds or 25 pounds and you can eat as much as you can go anywhere and the food are all set. You just go and pick. You mean go and pick them. <laughs> so I said I'm going to do the parable of the buffet to reveal these uh, stretches. Now, before I deal with uh, the buffet parable. Let's pick the scriptures. Second Timothy three sixteen. Let's deal with that first. So what does Second Timothy three sixteen? It says that all scripture, not seventy percent, not sixty percent, the hundred percent of the Bible, or says scripture, Old Testament scripture, New Testament scripture, and the scriptures are recorded in the book, and the book the. The book is known as the Bible. And that book has many books. Bible means books. So, the scriptures are what is written. And they are recorded in the book. A book is like a library. Okay? The Bible is like a library. So now, let's look at inspiration. Remember, the Bible interprets itself. That is a good point. If you have a pen... Or your phone, you can tap it on your phone and keep it somewhere. Because this is very important. The statement I just made is so important. The Bible interprets itself. What does that mean? That means if there is a word or a sentence or a verb, a verse in the Bible that is not clear or you cannot understand it very well. First, there are other scriptures that to interpret or give a meaning. To that scripture. So Bible or scriptures interprets themselves. If there is a scripture, there is a verse, there's a passage in scripture that is not clear or there's no understanding, there are other verses in the Bible that will interpret it. So now let's look at about the second Timothy 3 16 that all scripture is inspired all. What does it mean? That was the breath of God, the rurak, the wind of God, rurak in the Hebrew means wind, or the breath of God, guided the writers 
to make sure they wrote the right things that God wanted, wanted them to write. The thing that they wrote does not mean that they are all word of God, but the word of God happened in situations, happened in circumstances. Here's Geschichte, like in the uh, German uh, uh, terminology, the context, situational system. Here's Geschichte. Things that happens in a circumstance. And because the word of God, example, if God uh, spoke the word of God to Moses about the Ten Commandments, according to the word of God, God himself scripted, wrote the Ten Commandments on the stone. Now, when it was being written down in the script, God, by His Spirit, the rock of God, the breath of God, made sure that Moses recorded exactly what God wanted him to record for our consummation, for our benefit. So, 2 Timothy 3 says, All scripture is inspired, is guided by God for the documentation, for the writing. And he says that it is profitable. Oh, example, the bad things Satan did, the bad things some prophets did, bad things kings, kings did, they are all profitable for us. Why? Because we can learn from them. I'm they are for rebuke or correction. So if you, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar did something in the Bible as recorded, what Nebuchadnezzar did is not the word of God. But what it did, we can learn from it and the outcome. When what it did, what was God's response? The God's response to what Nebuchadnezzar did is the word of God. God's response is the word of God. But what Nebuchadnezzar did is not God's word. It is the act and the words of Nebuchadnezzar. But it's recorded that we might, we might have correction and learn from it. That what it did was wrong. Creating an image for people to bow to another image instead of worship the only God, the true God. Bible says that shall not worship any other God or any image, but only the one true God. So the word of God is there about worshiping God, but there was also an act of a king. And it's recorded. So that is an example. So Bible says all scripture, and so it's profitable for us. So all scripture, whether the word of God, words of men, events, situations recorded, they are all profitable because some of them are for doctrines, teachings. The doctrines and the teachings is based upon the word of God. Teachings and doctrines is not based upon what happened in the Bible. It is the word of God. What does the word of God say? What are the commandments of God? What are the laws of God? What are the decrees of God? What are the promises of God? What are the prophetic word of God? That is the word of God. I would say that every doctrine is good for teaching or for doctrine. Then you see that it's also for rebuke. What is the rebuke? Because things that others did and God disapproved, we can learn from it. So for our rebuke, so when we are going to do the same, say, hey, so a king did this, a man of God did this, a Christian or believer did this, and God did not like it. So I should also do. If God didn't like another Christian doing it, maybe God doesn't want me to do the same thing. So it's for rebuke. And it's for correction. And Bible says it's for training. See, so that's what the scriptures are. The other one is 2 Peter 1, 20 to 21. In 2 Peter 1, 20 to 21, it talks about Apostle Peter. He also talked about that the prophecies in the scriptures, note the two words, prophecy and scripture. So when I say <laughs> prophecy in the scripture, remember the scriptures are like library, book. So when I say science books, the science books in the library, when I say science book, I don't mean every book in the library because in the library, there are mathematical books, there are English books, there are ge geography books, there are different books. So when I say the science book in the library or the science book in the books, prophecy in the scriptures, that means prophecy is just a little part or a portion in the scriptures. Prophecy is not all the scriptures but it's a dimension of the word of God. In other words, prophecy is a word of God, 
because God, holy men spoke while they were moved. That's another inspiration. In other words, the wind of God, the breath of God. And they spoke through the activation of the Holy Spirit. And they declared the word of God. So that is the word of God. So all those words were now recorded. So now let's look at now the second Timothy back again. How the second Timothy 3.16, that inspiration of God breathed. How did it happen? We have to be practical. I'm a pra very practical person and pragmatic. Practical means how to do it. Pragmatic, pragmatic means is it helpful? So let's look at two scholars in the Bible. And these two scholars, they, they scripted, they recorded, they wrote part of the Bible, part of the scriptures. Dr. Luke and Apostle Paul. Yeah? So, the Dr. Luke, I think I want to read uh, Acts chapter 1. Just bear with me, let me just pick my Bible here. Yeah. I want to read it and I'll be through very soon. It's very important. So let's look at what Dr. Luke, Dr. Luke wrote, Dr. Luke is a medical doctor and Dr. Luke wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So chapter 1, the verse 1 and 2 verse 1, let's look at what he said about what he wrote or document or scripted. Remember it's a scripture. So let's look at Dr. Luke, what he said. But look about inspiration, about God breathed. So that God breathed doesn't mean that God detected. Does that mean that God said, Genesis to Revelation, God said, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, this is this, chapter verse 2, and, and all chapter 3. Remember already the Bible was not divided into chapters and verses. It was not on the original script. It was theologians like me, students of theology who did that. Why? To make it easier, pragmatic, helpful for us to do references. So originally, the scroll, the scrolls that the uh, scriptures were written on, there were no chapters, there were no verses. So all right, so let's look at Dr. Luke. Look at what Dr. Luke says. So the question is, is it God who caused them or God wrote it in an hour? Listen, let's, so let's look ex exactly what Dr. Luke says. Sorry for dipping my tongue. <laughs> the Bible is so that. More than what, I don't, I don't use this Bible a lot because of my mobile phone. I use my Bible on so the mobile phone, so it, it's not it's sticky, you know. Anyway, look at Dr. Luke, Luke verse 1. Chapter, Doc, Luke chapter, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are mostly surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also. Dr. Luke is telling us what he did. He says that in verse 1, other people before him, they took their time to write or document. That's what the verse says. He says other people before him, they wrote an account about the Lord Jesus, about what he did, and about the beginnings, about God. He said many people wrote, they scripted. Then verse 3, Dr. Luke is also going to tell us how the book of Luke, remember, the book of Luke is part of a scripture. So let's look at how, if God breathed or inspired Dr. Luke, how did it happen? We are looking about inspiration. If Dr. Luke was inspired to write the book of Luke, Let's look at how it was written. So we are looking at the word God breathed on inspiration. Look at verse 3. It seemed good to me also, Dr. Luke said to me, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write. Dr. Luke is saying that from analysis, from studying, from what he was told by the apostles before him, like Peter and the rest, those who were with Jesus, he said, based upon the account, what he heard, and what he understood, he also decided to write, to script, to record, to document, verse 3, is there. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write, to document, to write unto you in order, most excellent Theophilus, Theophilus lovers of God, people love God, friends of God. 
thou, thou mightest know the, sense, the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So Dr. Luke said that the book of Luke he wrote, and of course later he wrote the book of Acts as well. He said he wrote them based upon what he heard from the other apostles, from his understanding of events, and he wrote them. So, it's not Holy Spirit didn't come and say, Dr. Luke, right there, S -A -R, Jesus went. No, no, no. That is not inspiration. But inspiration is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So, in trying to understand what the apostles told him, what he saw them doing, they are preaching, what they were saying, what they did, Luke said, by doing all my understanding and doing all those research, as far as I'm concerned, I was guided by the Holy Spirit. I was inspired, it was by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to document, to write, to record, to script what the apostles told me, who were before me, what I heard, what I saw, and what are the eyewitnesses. Eyewitness, who are the eyewitnesses? It's the apostles. The most eyewitnesses were the 12 apostles because they were close to Jesus. So, so from in mean, this scripture tells us it, the inspiration of God breathed is not about God res, uh, reciting verb, uh, verbatim word by word to the author to write it down. That's not what it is. But prophecy is God telling them verbatim, or sometimes through I mean we want to call revelation through visions. Those ones are called the word of God. You see. And those even one, those ones that you were told by the prophets, those who wrote to them, some of them God will tell them to the prophet, write this down. God will say to Isaiah or prophet Jeremiah, write it down. Or Daniel, write it down. For the end of times, he recorded, documented, God would instruct them. So inspiration is not God moving on them and reciting them. K there, Kofi is going to school, Amma is coming. No, no, no. It is about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. Uh, Dr. Luke again. Dr. Luke is a medical doctor, intellectual person, and very spiritual. So let's look at Acts chapter 1. What Dr. Luke says again. Acts chapter 1. Let's look at Dr. Luke. Acts chapter 1. We are still writing to Theophilus, friends of God, or beloved of those who love God. The former treatise, the treatise with document, or the writings or the scripture. I said the former. So what is it referring to? It's a former, the previous one. What is the previous one? The book of Luke. So Dr. Luke is referring to his first writing. So Dr. Luke says that the former, former treatise I have made, O Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. So, to, uh, 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 Dr. Luke is also telling us again, here in the book of Acts, that in the book of Luke, he wrote of what Jesus taught, uh, what Jesus did. And how did he get to know? He said he got to know most of them through the apostles, those who were eyewitnesses, those who were with Jesus. The things they saw Jesus do, the thing that Jesus told them. And he was like a historian or a journalist. A journalist or a, or a scribe documenting, writing what they told him. So that I said a treatise. A treatise is like a, it's basically a document. Two, until the day in which he was taken up, the ascension. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his, his passion by the many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days. So he's still documenting how he showed signs and wonders and the apostles were eye, eyewitnesses. And after the resurrection, he appeared to fifty disciples, at least fifty disciples. And Dr. Luke is saying that all these people have given me their account. They've told me that they are eyewitness. They saw ascension. Just can't appear to them. And I'm documenting, I'm writing it down. So it is Dr. Luke who took upon himself to do it. But in doing it, 
Behind the scene was the Holy Spirit guiding the apostles to document the right story so that there's no fake news. <laughs> if I can borrow <laughs> the phraseology of a president, fake news, see that? so that there will not be fake news. Remember, when Christ, rose, uh, when Christ died and rose from the dead, what did the Pharisees and the strike do? They paid the journalists to go and spread the news, the media, multimedia, and tell the people that Jesus didn't rise from the dead. The apostles stole his body. They take him away. So it's not true that he resurrected. So that was the multimedia, the news. The word scribe is the Bible journalist or media people. Scribe. Scribe. The script. They are the one who write. They scribe. They are the one who write the news. So the Holy Spirit was making sure that the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and the haters of Jesus, or the haters of God, will not give false news. So that's what inspiration is. So practically we see that Jesus, the apostles were not detected to mechanically. Dr. Luke was not detected to mechanically that A, B, C, D, and he wrote. No, no, no. But what he heard from the apostles, the 12 disciples, what he saw, the account, the experiences, he tried to understand them. And by understanding, having illumination, or by the Holy Spirit, he began to document, he began to write them, them down. So it is spiritual things within a historical contest that Dr. Luke is saying. So the last one, then I'll start on the buffet and I'll be through. The second one is a theologian, a lawyer. Apostle Paul was a theologian, he was a lawyer, he was a scholar, very intellectual. But he got arrested by the power of God, very anointed. And Apostle Paul, from the book of Romans to, let's put it this way to, we are not sure about Hebrews, but apparently he may be the author. But up to, before James, James, Peter and the rest are not Apostle Paul. They are called epistles. Those books are epistle. What does the word epistle means? The word epistle simply means letters. It's a letter. So Apostle Paul, we hear about the situation, example, the Church of Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, he wrote, but he heard there was so much, the Church of Corinthians were spiritual, but there was no order. There was envy, there was jealousy, they were fighting about spiritual gifts, who can uh, prophesy more. Some say, I like Paul, some say, I like Apollos. So though they were spiritual, they were also the most carnal Christians. So when Paul heard it, he wrote to them. In other words, Paul was responding to a situation, to a circumstance. So it was not the Holy Spirit detected to Paul, but Paul has heard the news. And so I'm going to write a letter. Because I cannot fly. There's no airplane. Ship will take months or weeks to get there. So the best way for me to send a letter, and I'm going to send a letter because I cannot go there. So he sent a letter, he said, concerning this situation, this is my response. And if he didn't respond then, if in some situation, he said, this is what God told me about this situation. That is the word of God. And some will say, this is my opinion, not my own view, this is my own advice. That is not the word of God. But all of them are in the epistles or the letter that Paul wrote. So now, let's come back to the word inspiration of God breathed. God breathed upon Paul, how? Not because he detected to Paul, write to this and this, no, no, no. But be, no, Paul himself was responding, but he was being guided. In other words, behind the scene was an invisible hand, a visible hand making sure that Paul was not going to write things and say things that would not be beneficial to the church universal, to the body of Christ, not just for their days, but the times to come. In John 17, Jesus prayed a prayer. He said, I pray not for only the here, the disciples here, but as many that will believe. That is me. So in John 17 prayer, is the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is not our Father who art in heaven. That is the disciples' prayer. Because they ask Jesus to teach them how to pray. The Lord's prayer is John 17. When I teach about the glory of God, I'll touch on that. John 17 is the Lord's prayer, the Jesus' prayer himself. He prayed to the Father. And over the, the addresses, it says that, righteous Father. I like that. Oh, Holy Father. 
When I pray personally, that's what I address my father. I say, Holy, Holy Father, Righteous Father. Because that's how I call Yes, guys, is my big brother, you know. <laughs> hey, so are you. Yes, guys, is your big brother. <laughs> By virtue of his death, his atonement, his sacrifice, we have all become sons and daughters of God. So this God had only one son. But through the atonement, now God has many sons and daughters. So Jesus is my brother. So Jesus Christ calls him Righteous Father. When I'm praying, I also say Righteous Father. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Let me check. Any question? Any question, anything, I'll respond to Just feel free. If you have a question, any comment, I'll respond to that. So, we see also the Apostle Paul, the lawyer and the theologian, a very anointed man of God, an apostle. When he began to write, he was responding to a situation. So it's not like he was there and the Holy Ghost began to dictate to him, write this for First Corinthians. No, no, no. If in 2 Corinthians, when he was writing, he said to them, in my first letter, that's the first Corinthians, I was harsh, I was this. But now I realize that even though I wrote it was harsh, I'm still okay with that because it has brought repentance. It has deterred some of you from doing mistakes. So in the second Corinthians too, he has heard about their response about the first letter and was responding to their reaction to the first letter. So I want to take the word inspiration or God breathed. If we take it literally as though God was breathing the scriptures out, it is not true because the Bible interprets itself. Not that within the Bible, we can know practically, step by step, how the scriptures were recorded. Some were written like Apostle Paul as letters. Epistle means letter. And I've given this footnote always. A modern word, word if there's a term you don't understand, it's easy. Google it. That is so simple. If there's a term, you don't know the meaning because language is living. In other words, language dies and language surfaces. That's why there's this all this urban dictionary and order because languages die because language is living. So some languages, some words, their meaning in 100 years ago is not the same today. So one of the ways, as I've said, for understanding and clarification is to Google. Then when you Google for Bible, one of the areas you can go to is the Wikipedia. The Wikipedia, a lot of uh, scholars and theologians have given, written about articles, about some topics. Though you may, some of them may not be right or something, but at least you're going to have a rough idea, especially when it comes to technologies. So, Wikipedia, just Googling, good. Two, if there's a verse, if there's a verse that there's no understanding, I always tell people, I always tell Christians, just Google that verse and add the word commentary. So, example, like we have here, 2 Timothy 3.16. So, I'm not sure. One, you can just type John 1 Timothy 3.16. Then there will be like one of the Bible hubs. The Bible hubs, it gives different translation of the Bible. So King James, NIV, American, what? Different, different version. So the same verse, you can have different translation. New, good news Bible, the living Bible. So modern translation. So by reading about six translations, you have an idea of the word or the phraseology. Or if you don't do that, when you put... 2 Timothy 3, 16, add commentary. So when you hear the word commentary, add that is a primary source. Primary, not, uh, it's a secondary source, not primary source. Though it's a secondary source, these are opinions of some great scholars. Evangelicals, you want to pick what evangelicals are saying, unless you are writing a dissertation or a thesis. If you are not doing that, basically, for evangelicals, you want to hear the opinions of evangelicals. So if they alter, or that secondary source is an evangelical, you want to hear the evangelical view of that verse. Of course, it doesn't mind if you want to. Me, in general, because I like discussion, I like debate, I argue, argument is not fine, it's a good thing. So I like to have the view of Catholics and other Protestants and all different, different, the Orthodox Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, all different, different, I want to have opinion, and I contrast and compare. 
to see how it works. But that is just a footnote. Google, Wikipedia, then verses and read them in the Bible Hub. There are about six different or seven or ten translations that will help you understand the verse. Apart from that, commentary. Write the verse, add the word commentary, Google it. Then you have a lot of commentaries about that. By so doing, you realize that, like I said, if I said the Bible is not the word of God, it, people should not have a problem. It is it's a fact. The Bible simply means books. In the books, is Satan not speaking in the Bible. So I tell him that what Satan said is the word of God. That is crazy. Anything Satan said does not bring faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's only the word of God that brings faith. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, it is spirit and it is life. So now the, the buffet, as I end, the buffet parable. So a story. The, the Bible is like a buffet. <laughs> the Bible is like a buffet. So when you go there, you have the right to look at the food, to look at what you want to pick and the rest to choose. But in the buffet scenario, there may be pizza, there may be shish kebab, donut kebab, definitely not throwing donut kebab and shish kebab. <laughs> there may be milk, there may be meat, there may be some seafood, there may be milk, there may be other things. But let's assume, let's assume, milk and meat over there in the buffet is the only, is the word of God. Now, it does not mean, it does not mean that the prawns, the, <laughs> the what are this, uh, fried rice, does not mean all of them are not good because every scripture is inspired. It's all good. Because it is good for our profitability. It's because it is profitable for us. Because even bad carrot, we learn from it. If somebody stole and he died, you don't want to steal so that you don't die. So you do the opposite. So every scripture is profitable, it is good for us. But faith and doctrine is not based upon every scripture. Faith and doctrine is based upon, in the buffet scenario, is based upon the meat and the milk. But we say desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow. So it's the milk of the word that will cause us to grow. And Bible says as we mature, Bible says that desire the meat of the word. Paul said to the Corinthians, you are still babes because you are still, you are like still taking milk. You are babes because of your behavior. But it tells to people that you must move to the meat of the word. So it is the milk of the word in the buffet or buffet scenario. And it's the meat of the word that will bring growth, vitality, strength, power, faith. That is the word of God. But all the other things, the ice cream <laughs> is good. <laughs> But too much of it, you know. <laughs> all the other stuff in the buffet, they are all good. They are for our consumption. All scripture is for our consumption. It's profitable. The Bible is good. It is holy. It is separated. I don't have any problem about that. But in the Bible, it is not only the word of God. We have the word of God, like prophecy, the decrees of God, the promises of God. Jesus Christ, the, Jesus, the act of God and the words of God is the word of God. In the Bible also, we have the words of Satan. We have the words of demons. We have the words of kings. We have the words of foolish kings. We have the words of wise kings. We have the words even of a donkey. We have the words of servants, maids, Hagar. We have the words of prostitutes. We have the words of farmers. So in the Bible, we have the words of foolish friends of Job. And we have the words of Elihu, a wise young man who was around. We have the words of Job, and we have the words of God. Practicality and pragmatic. When I'm being practical and pragmatic, realize that what I'm saying, if you permit me to use that phrase, is common sense. So all this is not the word of God. I know all of preachers will tell you every Sunday, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I can do what he can say. No, no. This is your Bible, yes. It contains the word of God. It is not the word of God. And of course, since your pastor has been telling you it is the word of God, so it pains you. 
Or become, you will become hurt. Oh, why should this guy bring confusion? Why should this guy say something that, oh, it's against all that my creature have said? You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The goal is not disproving other preachers. The goal is we'll go for the word. Because we end up accusing God. We act upon any scripture. And some of them are not the word of God. And when there is no result, when there is no answers, we blame God. But forgetting that, we are not doing the right thing. Faith only comes by the word of God, by the hearing, the act of hearing the word of God. Faith just doesn't come because you read the scriptures. If your faith doesn't just come because a preacher just preached some scripture. Faith comes when you understand. You hear the second year, not the first year. There's the first year and there's the second year. Like I said last weekend, it's when you hear the word of God. And when we hear the word of God, there should be a result. The word of God is predictable. I'm saying it again. The word of God is predictable. In other words, it's like mathematics. If I add one to one, the results can never be seven, it must be two. One plus one is equal to two. That's why marriage. It is not one plus one. Marriage is one in one. Like God. Say God, the Father, Jesus said, I'm in the Father, the Father is in me. I'm in the Holy Spirit. So that's what the three is one. That is not mass. That is a spiritual dynamics. In marriage, it's the same thing. It's not one plus one. Go one plus one, then you are two, you are not one. In marriage, it is one in one. The wife in the husband and the husband in the wife. So it's a fusion come. Uh, it's a fusion concept. It is a blending. It is hybrid, uh, hybridization, hybrid. It's a mixing. It's a blending. It's a processing. Like you blend tomatoes, onions together. It is blended. It becomes shuto or moko for the kinky. That should tell you I'm hungry. All right, thanks for patronizing me. Since I'm not seeing any questions or comments for me to respond, I will leave you for now. Since I've, I started talking about buffet and buffet, whatever you want to call it, and I've talked about some shooter, that should tell you the guy is hungry. Man should not live by bread alone. But by every word of God, by the bread is also included. Alone means included. <laughs> All right. More grace to you. May God continue to grant you illumination. Touch your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes. Tomorrow I'll pick on the voice of your spirit. Tomorrow. The voice of your spirit, your inner man, there's something called the inner man and the outer man. Because let me remember we are doing the voice of God. And I'm going to, going to talk about how God communicates with your spirit. Then your voice, which we say, sometimes we say something told me. So we want to talk about something told me. What is the something told me? Tomorrow, see you. Jehovah is on your side. Bye now.
Let me hear 